Well, welcome along to the finale of Investment Fundamentals Week. All this week, we have been talking with Graham Rowan, chairman of the Elite Investor Club, about the building blocks of achieving financial freedom um, and securing your wealth. And I think, Graham, um, you know, right back at the beginning there, if we think back to Monday, it's really that a job is exchanging your time for money and you only have a limited amount of time. So you're never really going to get wealthy through a job. You do have to look at things outside of your job. And we've covered some of those topics there um, already this week. Yeah, absolutely. I think in a sense, you know, people talk about financial freedom and sometimes they think that means Rolls Royces and private jets yeah. and stuff. But I know people who are living on two and a half, three thousand pounds a month, and that suits them. That's yeah. the life they want. So for me, financial freedom is when your passive income exceeds your monthly expenses. Mm -hmm. And then you don't have to work unless you want to. You can choose who you work with. Um, and it's, it's really fun firing clients sometimes. I've mm -hmm. done that a few times. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, that's the, the holy grail, if you like. So what we're trying to get to is a point where your passive income exceeds your living expenses, and then a of course, once you start accumulating wealth, you'll soon realize that there are people that want to separate you from that wealth, including chancellors and all the rest of it. So the final thing we need to look at, I think, today is how we protect that wealth with what I call a financial fortress that we build around it. Mm. That's very, very important because obviously if you've gone to all this trouble, you're going to have um, considerations like leaving um, wealth to your your um, children um, and you need to protect um, everything that you've worked so hard to to, to create so how does somebody go around creating what you call um, the financial fortress well I think that first of all there's some very basic fundamentals uh, the first is to have a valid will in place and I think something like 70 or 80 percent of Brits mm. don't have a valid will the next thing is to have powers of attorney in place, which is to say uh, one for your health and one for your wealth. To, to put it crudely, one is the who switches off the life support machine question, and the other is if you were to go gaga tomorrow, who's going to look after your financial uh, uh, pyramid that you've built up? So um, they're very simple things and cost-effective things to put in place, um, but you need to have those in place. Um, the next thing you then got to think about is really, I think, protecting yourself from the tax man, because mm -hmm. the more you accumulate, obviously, the more you can potentially pay in tax. So uh, one of the things we get involved in is, is referring people to tax planning experts. Uh, this includes typically uh, uh, there's a particular kind of pension you can get that I call a director's pension which is very flexible if you run a limited company um, not only is it a very uh, flexible investment vehicle you can shelter profits from your company into it you can make loans back to your company from it mm -hmm. or to third parties and really importantly it becomes an inheritance vehicle for the next generation mm -hmm. so you can pass that fund on tax-free um, alongside that you might also want a family investment company because pensions have some limitations you know you can only put a million pounds each in there a lifetime limit um, and there are certain kinds of assets you can't put in there um, you know art and classic cars and things like that so oftentimes it's worth considering having a separate company which is a family investment company where you can put those assets in there's no lifetime limits or anything else and you're still in a 19 percent corporation tax environment well pre-corbin you are anyway um and 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 not a 45 percent personal tax so so if you think about you know you've got this kind of trifecta almost of your trading company your director's pension and your investment company and those give you massive tax efficiencies because you can also use the company the investment company as an inheritance vehicle um, because uh, don't forget, at the moment, anything above about 325000 you're going to be paying 40% tax, or at least the next generation will pay 40% mm -hmm. tax. And you, I, I always say inheritance tax is a voluntary tax for people that fail to plan. Mm -hmm. And if you put your affairs in place properly, you can avoid, and I've seen with our own members in the Elite Investor Club, sometimes two, three, four million pounds of tax mm -hmm. can be avoided mm -hmm. perfectly legally. These are not weird little schemes. This is just mainstream planning. Mm -hmm. And I guess um, also insurance um, 
falls into the kind of um, financial fortress as well. Um, and I think certainly in, in the property sector, many people are underinsured. They don't have life insurance and, and such important insurances. Oh, absolutely. And this is one that I mean, everyone, it's a bit like, you know, sometimes you mention pensions and people think it's boring, fall asleep. The same thing happens with insurance. But um, a lot of people know about life insurance. And life insurance, there's no excuse not to have it. It is so cheap. But you have to ask yourself, why is life insurance cheap and why is critical illness cover expensive? The answer is that hardly anyone claims on life insurance, fortunately, but lots of people claim on critical illness cover. So if you're running a business and you're the main person in that business, you really should have critical illness cover because you know, if you had to stop work for any reason, the impact would be enormous. Um, so yeah, I pay quite a chunky fee for critical illness cover, um, but I wouldn't be without it because you know, obviously if anything happened to me, I want to know that my wife's going to still have an income stream that would match you know, what we've been doing in the business. So think about critical illness cover as well as life insurance cover. Um, and sometimes you can use life insurance as a, as a kind of a tax protection vehicle or um, you know, if you think something's going to happen that might generate a taxable event on death, you can cover that with an insurance policy mm -hmm. as well. So these are the sorts of things that are above my pay grade. I'm not a financial advisor or a tax advisor, but we can refer you know, people to the, the right experts who can do that for them. Indeed. Now, throughout the week, um, we've been uh, kind of on the journey that you yourself have taken, the five steps that we've covered over the past five days. And looking back, Graham, what was the most challenging thing for you on your personal financial journey? I think probably the, the, uh, the transition from our employee to being a business owner um, nothing really prepares you for that. You know, when I was, I was a, a director of a great big company, I had a huge support team around me, um, and then you suddenly find that you know, you're the person who's the strategist, but you're also the person that's taking out the garbage you know, at the end of the day. So nothing quite prepares you for that transition. And I think when you're in business, frankly, the highs are higher and the lows are lower than yes. when you're in a job. Mm -hmm. um, but I wouldn't trade it. I, I wish I'd done it sooner. I was in my 40s before I had my first business. Mm -hmm. I, I wish I'd done it 10 or 15 years earlier. So I think that was the big transition. But then once I realized that was going to give me the income that I needed to start investing, uh, then I started getting that e excitement, really, that you know, now I can start making these investments. And I, and I did you know, stock markets. I did property. Um, as, as we've discussed before, you know, I, I'm now out of the residential buy to let, but I did that for more than a decade. Um, now more into commercial properties and cemeteries and all sorts of things. Um, so, yeah, for me, I think the, 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 the transition to business owner was the most important that I would point to because that then generated the income that enabled me to build the wealth pyramid. And what I found was, and I was a bit slow in this, and to be honest, I think most people are, um, it took me a long time to realize that I, I could and should put these protection strategies in place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of people are out there almost what I would call naked. They're very vulnerable. Mm -hmm. You know, they've done a brilliant job of building wealth. They've not done enough to protect it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I come across a, a thing I call fee aversion. Mm -hmm. And you know, when you're dealing with top accountants, tax advisors, people like that, their business model is to charge for their time. Mm. And you've just got to pay to play. Mm. You can't find it, you know, I, I see people, oh, I'm going to try and read a book to avoid paying this guy mm. some fees. That is nonsense. That's a false economy. I've seen people with multi-million pound wealth pyramids that refuse to pay five grand to a tax advisor who could save them a million quid. You know, it's bonkers. You've got to pay these people. And they know what they're doing. So, so make sure when you get to a certain point, you know, improve the caliber of your advisors. Yep. Uh, one of the things that I often find, particularly in business people, is they stick with their accountants way too long. Oh. This is the guy that when they were a startup, he was a nice bloke, he did their strategy accounts. When you were doing 100,000 a year, maybe that was okay. They're now doing 2 million a year mm -hmm. and he's still doing the accounts and he knows none of this stuff about director's pensions or investment companies or any of that. And they're just not doing these things because they're not being told about them. So. You know, review your advisors just like you review your investment portfolio every year or two and see whether you need to upgrade them.
Well, I think that's absolutely fantastic advice. And of course, it's all tax deductible professional <laughs> fees, isn't it? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> and I guess just to round up the week, um, Gray, and probably more on an inspirational note and also maybe an emotional note, because you said at the beginning of the week that your decision to take control of your uh, financial affairs was, was largely an emotional one as well. Um, when you started on your wealth journey, I, I I imagine that you had a, a sort of image in your mind of what your life might look like when you'd achieved all of this. Mm. Now you're coming through into your um, kind of dotage of your final, your, your kind of financial journey, if I could describe it as that. H how is your life um, today? Is it, is it what you envisaged or better? Um, yeah, I'm not quite ordering the Zimmer frame just yet, but I'm, 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 I'm getting there. But uh, no, I, I, absolutely. It's a point that I really want to emphasize is you design the life that you want to live mm -hmm. and then you fund it from your wealth pyramid. So I knew, I mean, I, some years ago, I met my wife at a French evening class, for example, and we always wanted to end up having a property in France. It took us a while, but you know, now we have a place down there in the, on the Cap d'Antibes, and so we're down there about a week of every month, and we can still run Elite Investor Club from down there. Um, and also one of the things I've been talking about, as remember in the wealth pyramid, is this need for more kind of global thinking and being a global citizen. So recently we've now bought a place over in Montenegro, which has given us a second residency. And that means that if the worst happened here and we end up with, you know, 95% tax like we had back in the 60s, we've got somewhere else we can go. You know, so, so we've kind of designed this life. So we now have the, we, the lifestyle we want in, in a three-centre thing between Britain, France, and Montenegro. Uh, and it's the way we want to live, and we're funding it from the combination of our business, our investments, and everything else. So, you know, the inspiration should be to design the life you want, and, and your life will be very different to mine, mm -hmm. but you see what you want that to look like, and then start putting together the pieces of your jigsaw and your, your wealth pyramid to fund that lifestyle mm -hmm. um, so that you have you know, both financial freedom, but also, you know, no one wants, just wants to be rich for the sake of it. What's mm -hmm. the point of that? You know, it's, it's to do the things you want to do. And the one thing I would say that also I probably put under the, the heading of the, um, the financial fortress piece is to start thinking about things like legacy and philanthropy. You know, is, is there something you want to leave behind? Are you just going to leave it all to the kids? Is there some foundation you want to support, some charity, some mm -hmm. cause? Um, you know, what is it you want to leave behind you? Mm -hmm. and, and that's quite an exciting thought as well, you know, because as you start accumulating some wealth, you can think like that. And you can think, well, actually, I could put something in place that would go on doing that long after I'm gone, you know, and, and that, that has its own kind of excitement as well. So, so design the life you want today, but also think about the legacy you want to leave behind and then structure your financial affairs to make that happen. Well, that's absolutely fantastic, Graham, and I cannot thank you enough for taking part in our Investment Fundamentals Week. I, I can't think of anybody better who could have expressed so eloquently these topics. Um, so sincere thanks um, from everybody at Property Tribes for your contribution throughout the week. Um, I, I do hope you enjoy, you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. I've always uh, learned so much when I speak to Graham. He inspires me in many different ways. Um, and uh, if you have been watching on YouTube, again, I do invite you to subscribe to our channel because we're hopefully going to be featuring Graham a lot more in the future. We love his input. Um, and also, of course, do click across to propertytribes.com. That is where our discussions are hosted. So um, we're closing out here. We're ending our Investment Fundamentals Week. Do hope you've enjoyed it. And once again, Many, many thanks to my co-host, Graham Rowan. And Graham, if they want to know more about the Elite Investor Club, is there any criteria for joining? Tell us a little bit about that just to end. Sure, yeah. If, if you go to eliteinvestorclub.com, you'll see there's a, there's a page there where you can join. Just have a look around the website and, and see if you think that you know, we might we, you know, suit it to each other. Um, we don't charge for joining the club. Um, you know, we, we just have a look at what you fill in on the application form. And if it looks like we're going to be able to help each other, then we go ahead with that. And then normally what we do is quite early in the process, we get together for a face-to-face -face meeting. We understand what you know, your financial goals are, and then we see whether there's any way in which we can help. You know, recognizing, as I say, we're not financial advisors. We're just kind of educators and informers. Um, and then we obviously have our own investment portfolio that's available to people if they're interested in that as well. 
Fantastic. Well, there we go. We're closing out here now of this themed week on Property Tribes and we do hope you've enjoyed it. Um, and stay tuned. As I said, we'll be seeing a lot more of Graham in the future. Thank you so much, Graham. Thank you very much for the opportunity.